and welcome to the quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. In this show, every week, we bring you new personalities. They are leading ones. They share their views and vision on this show. And you've been watching it for many days and years, I would say now, because we've completed more than 100 episodes and the journey is still on. And it, what a lovely and interesting journey it has been to know uh, the interesting tales of these personalities. And right now, again, we have a very interesting guest with us, very special guest with us. He is the general secretary of a party, which is CPI, and his name is Mr. Sudhakar Das. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, you are here again at a time when uh, so much is happening in the country. And we are talking about democracy in a country where we really respect it so much. But as a party, I would say that right now you are, you are yourselves trying to establish or reestablish yourselves, strengthen yourselves as a party in the current atmosphere. So how should we? really look at this party and this whole organizational strength that it should carry. In the parliamentary democracy, sometimes some political parties cannot win enough of seats, though there will be uh, bigger strength. In fact, the proportional representation will give some sort of fair representation to the in the House. For example, Bahujan Samaj Party mm. is the third biggest party in the country mm. with no representation in the Lok Sabha. Yeah. And at one time, with more than 10% of the vote, Bharti Janata Party could get only two representatives in the parliament. So that way, CPI has also this time could get only a single representative in Lok Sabha. Because the first past the post mm. is the system. Hmm. in our election, naturally because of the several sorts of influence, mm -hmm. particularly I would like the role there of the money and all you, that. ask you, what are these influences? A party which really stood for, now what is very popular is to call Aam Admi. So you actually, uh, your core strength has been to, to associate with that Aam Admi, uh, the common man, and take uh, you know head those aspirations that these people have. Uh, where do you think that you started losing ground? Actually, as a matter of fact, the emergence of the religious fundamentalist parties, casteist parties, they are trying to marginalize the parties with ideology and politics. I don't think this is going to be a permanent phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, unfortunately, that is the reality in Indian politics. Mm -hmm. Regional parties, some of them are casteist, hmm. some of them are family parties, hmm. but representing a section of the local influential people hmm. who feel that they are ignored in the national mainstream. Mm -hmm. They support the regional parties. And like all. you yourself mentioned, uh, a party like Bahujan Samaj Party, uh, Samajwadi Party, and look at uh, the kind of uh, performance it has shown this time, which is surprising actually. Uh, but then the question is to introspect and say as to why it's happening. Of course, we saw a great majority that uh, this particular government, present government has got. Let, let's look at this phenomena of what's happening actually. Yes, the, this type of phenomena, as I said, is quite likely will not last for a long time. Ultimately, the people will think of some sort of ideology, economy, socio-political conditions, mm. and then they select the political representatives who can represent their aspirations and who can fulfill their aspirations. So, so at, we, at your at your party, uh, you know, when you gather together uh, and you introspect, of course, I know that uh, as a rule you put forth all your views and you introspect. And I know at this juncture you're doing that. Uh, what path do you really look at in terms of taking a road ahead at a juncture when you should really take on the masses and uh, you know their dreams and aspirations ahead? So, what is the journey or path that you should take? You see, our parties, Communist Party of India and other left parties. We don't represent the entire population of the country. Mm. We represent the working people. We represent the downtrodden sections of the society. Mm. Working peasantry, agriculture, labor, yeah, and true. these sections of the people. In the present juncture, we are unable to make these sections of the people to whom 
for whose benefit we are working, mm. could make them to consciously mobilize behind us, mm. fighting against the other type of uh, luring by other parties. But, but don't you feel there came a par party, especially in Delhi, a party called Aham Admi Party, which also, again, the name itself of the party suggests that it's working for the common man. Uh, how would you really look at Aham Admi Party, a space that this particular party has taken of yours? Yes, Aham Admi Party is a comparatively a good and better party than the other ruling parties. But there is a difference. Aham Admi Party openly declared they are not against capitalism. We are against capitalism. That is the reason why, in spite of fighting against corruption and their intention to fight the corruption to the end, they did get quite a big type of donations and support from various sections of the people. But does that worry you, we, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, strength they got, the kind of mobilization that you're talking about from we, the people they got? Uh, as a matter of fact, we don't feel it as a rival party. But uh, at the same time, we have a feeling that in the present system of the society, without changing the structure of the society, mm -hmm. they can't completely eliminate corruption. They want capitalism to continue, mm -hmm. and at the same time, corruption-free society. Mm -hmm. Capitalism and corruption are interlinked. It will not be possible. But their honesty and sincerity, because there is stinking corruption in the society, mm -hmm. The people are angry, fed up. Mm. That is why they thought that this party will certainly help them. Mm -hmm. And they but, voted for it. I, you, I wish them success, but the success will be limited. Uh, do you think as, as a party or even as individuals, sometimes we introspect and say we have to redesign, we have to reinvent ourselves to maybe connect much more and in a better manner. Do you think the party needs to do that? You mean to, Ahmad to, party? Yeah. No, you, uh, CPI, I would say. Uh, yes. Do you think there is, a, there is a need to redesign or reinvent? That is the term. That is true. That uh, There are several issues on which we have to mobilize the people in a big way hmm. and make them feel that uh, we represent uh, the their ideas and aspirations hmm. and all that. For example, the, the, uh, Aam Admi Party used social media. It connects with the youth in a very interesting manner. Uh, it adopted some new strategies, actually, some innovative ones to connect with the normal, uh, you know, common man. And that's where I, I think it worked, uh, you know, with the people. That is true that uh, their strategy and tactics and their slogan did attract a very big section of the hmm. people. But what we feel, hmm. corruption is not the only issue. Question of price rise. Hmm and what is the basis for the price rise, mm. and the other type of problems like uh, concentration of the wealth in the hands of few corporate few. houses yeah. and all that. Yeah. If these issues are not eliminated and fought back, mm. there is no point in having a corruption-free, exploiting society. But how are you making I, that voice heard? I don't heard? think corruption cannot be Eliminated. Also. I think very strong issue. But how are you making your voice being heard? I mean, that is right now. I think um, a challenge. I would say. I mean, you are talking about you know all these parties coming together also and becoming one entity. There was a talk that whether parties should now be scattered and have their own identity. You are talking about unification once yes, again. Yes, it is true. Not unification. We have a coined another term. Okay. That is called the reunification of the communist movement. Okay. That. Uh, the idea is all the communist parties who agree mm. in the present parliamentary democracy and participate in it, mm. they should all join together. Mm. And a new party or new entity should come. Okay. So that there will be more confidence among the people. The split in the communist movement has, uh, in a way, demoralized some sections of the society. And this type of people who are fed up with the capitalist system, yeah. their exploitation, poverty, unemployment, and all these people are to be brought together. Mm -hmm. For that, as a the first step, we are having a coordination committee of the left parties at mm -hmm. the national level. Okay. And this coordination committee is with six parties now. 
but in the states there are more other left parties. Okay. So we have state level coordination committees where 10, 12 left parties are there. Okay. But in spite of all these, mm. the left cannot be immediately accepted as an alternate. Our strength is not enough. So the left and other democratic forces mm. who stand for secularism, mm. who stand for basic economic reforms, so, these parties and uh, individuals should come together. All, all of them are to be mobilized. For example, we saw now, I mean, we are looking at Bihar, for example, the elections which is uh, forthcoming and we are looking at all these new dimensions and new permutations and combinations happening where you have a Janta Parivar phenomena coming up. Yeah. Uh, and this was only to address that, you know, again, the secular front, that they had to fight the popular government, the, the NDA. Uh, how would you look at that phenomena? Where is your stake in that? You see, these parties, Janata Parivar coming together. From one angle, it is good that secular parties are coming closer mm -hmm. to have a single entity. But there is a problem that uh, these all parties, they are called Janata Parivar because they are all virginally in one single Janata party, which was uh, created by Jay Prakash Narayan and others. Do you think it's long-lasting? The Janta Parivar will really last long as an entity, all, of, all these parties come Yes, together. now this is a loose entity at the moment. And I don't think they can come together as a single part. They can be have some sort of electoral understanding, but their biggest disadvantage is most of them are family-based parties. Okay. And family-based parties cannot have Proper but are you aligning with that uh, that concept or not at this stage? But are you aligning with that front or entity at this stage or not? On issues we are ready to identify or jointly work if they agree on basic economic reforms or yeah. some serious anti-people's policies of the government. So you're, you're watching whether it was Congress or the BJP. Okay. For example, we fought when the UPA was there okay. against the retail trade, foreign direct re retail trade. We, we so, were all so at this stage, you're saying that you're watching basically, and then you'll call, you know take a call on this. That's but what you're saying. You're watching right now, isn't it? That yes. whether those real, oh, yeah. We'll have to take a very short break out here, and uh, we'll uh, continue, of course, the conversation. We are right now on the Quest on Raj Sabha TV talking to Mr. Sudhakar Reddy, the General Secretary of CPI. We'll continue to talk to him even after this very short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Quest here on Rajya Sabha TV. We are right now in conversation with Mr. Sudhakar Reddy. So uh, we were talking about this whole secular atmosphere becoming dominant. And that's what you would like to support, yeah. isn't it? But even secularism alone is not the point where we can all unite. Along with secularism, there should be some minimum alternative economic policies, which can reduce the poverty, which can control the corporate houses mm -hmm. concentrating the entire wealth in their hands and all that. Mm -hmm. and, In the and, last few years, yeah. fantastic amount of wealth is created in our country. Mm -hmm. But in the last few years, poverty has also very true. Fun. Very true. And we are talking about this land acquisition bill that your party has really yeah. taken a stand on. But what exactly could be done? I mean, the government is facing a challenge, but the government is trying to still make its way out. How do you see this whole, again, negotiation happening to look for the farmers' rights, basically, and to make that dominant? So the thing is that uh, as a left party, we have some scientific analysis. Without industries, no country can advance. And industries cannot be built in the sky. They do need land. We agree. But what type of land? and which land is to be given, and what should be the proper compensation to be given to the farmer. On these issues, we have serious difference of opinion mm -hmm. with the government. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, whoever is in the government, mm -hmm. they don't take into consideration the ideas and opinions from the opposition parties. Mm -hmm. They think all wisdom is with them because they are elected ones and form the government and all that. 
in India, mm -hmm. there are vast wastelands. According to the government's uh, estimation itself, 8 crore acres of wasteland is there. There is a wasteland development co yeah. com board or corporation, yeah. something like that. Huge amount of money is put on this. Why can't they have the industries there? Generally, the industrialists prefer, besides the national highway mm. or a railway line or near a seaport, because they do need urgent it's, transportation yeah. of infrastructural their support. Products. Yeah, yeah, true. What we suggest, instead of taking the land of the farmers uh. where food products are produced, the government should show these lands and construct so, the roads. So, so, so these suggestions are being looked into, you think so? These so valid suggestions are being looked into? Pardon? Are they being looked into? I mean, are Yes, yes, we did make this suggestion. Okay. That is number one. Number okay. two, industry, of course, is important. But agriculture is also more important. And the agriculturists, hmm. they should be given a very fair compensation. Along with the compensation, what we say, that they should get a share in the industry which is being created on their land. And if the government uh, takes back the land mm -hmm. because they don't construct the yeah. That land should so, be given. So I think a lot of onus on the government, and that's why we'll have to really wait for the next parliament sessions to really see what's happening. Uh, another bill, GST bill, which the government is really, really keen on. Yeah. And how would you look at that happening? In the GST bill, generally, it looks as a good bill. Uh, it it's, uh, reduces the several types of taxes from place to place and all that. But there are some very serious weaknesses. Because of the GST bill, mm. on the whole, mm. it is the big industrialists and corporates who gets biggest benefit. And the states mm. are going to lose permanently the source of income. On these issues, there should have been more serious discussion. And, debate. and now also what we feel mm. the government should not rush. They should try to evolve a consensus create confidence in the states that their losses will be properly uh, but, but the government and i'm right now being uh, you know speaking from that side from maybe the government side and trying to say that uh, what if the version is that we are doing it for development we really want growth to happen and that there should be no opposition to growth the, you know th that's their no, stand so there is a difference development for whom the development which they are claiming the development which has come after the neoliberal economic policies that are pursued in the country, which they claim has brought the GDP growth rate and all that, has brought more poverty also. And the, including the GDP, we accuse this government is more pro-corporate and anti-poor. Seriously. Uh, but what do you think should be done? We are, of course, seeing price rise. Right now, when I and you are talking, we are talking about the rising price of onions, which I think one has to wonder as to why it happens at a certain time every time. And I think there is no connection of parties, frankly, and that's my individual assessment. That is true. Uh, the thing is, there is no proper arrangement on the part of the government. For example, it is not unexpected. First of all, the government is not ready to control the hoarding. We know some of the very big companies are hoarding the onion and other important uh, food grains, vegetables, and all that. But the government is not ready to do it. They cannot do it because during the period of Vajpayee government, they brought an amendment by which they cannot break the hoarding at all. They can only pressurize and all that. What we demand that this Hoarding Act hmm. should be amended and government should have a right to enter into the hoarding places, bring out all these things and distribute it to the people. Mm -hmm. Number two, hmm. there should be a balance of uh, proper remunerative price to the farmer mm -hmm. and also to the consumer. And for this, along with, we have a wonderful fantastic uh, public distribution system in the country. This public distribution system should be further strengthened mm. with more cold storages.
okay. where the vegetables, this type of onions and all this should be stored and that should be distributed properly. But my question here is that governments after governments, one would really blame it to the climate change, one would blame it to, uh, you know, uh, the situations prevalent at that time. And these uh, kind of answers we've been really hearing when such problems occur, for example, whether uh, farmers commit suicides, uh, whether, uh, you know, all these problems related to our agriculture happens. Uh, we somehow hear this repetitive kind of answer coming from whichever party is in the government. Yes, that is true that uh, some parties or whoever is in the ruling party doesn't react to the serious problems. And uh, a long-term uh, solution, and but, a long-term solution. Yes, for a long-term solution and all that. That is a very most unfortunate thing. Somehow, the corporates are influencing the ruling parties that their growth and their welfare is the welfare of the nation. True. Uh, crores of people in the country, mm. they are not being eliminated. For so example, that's why very important that you should raise your voice. Days in no. your in the TVs, yeah. in the newspapers, about the onion prices and all yeah, that. I know, I know. There is a discussion. Government did not react, yeah. no statement. Yeah. When and the stock market crashed, yeah. within hours there was an urgent meeting of the government. Very valid point. And so that, that's why it's very pertinent and important that you should raise voice as a party. For example, uh, unorganized sector. You wanted a separate bill yeah. uh, and something that should seriously be looked at. But the government would say, and I mean, I remember Prime Minister Modi saying in a conference that we are really, really looking at the micro uh, management of their welfare. So how would you really say that the government is not serious about it? Definitely government is not serious. Uh, between 2005 and 2009, I was the chairman of the Labour Standing Committee of the Parliament. Mm -hmm. And we have made very important recommendations about the social security for the unorganized sector. It is possible, it is not impossible to have social security, guarantee of employment mm -hmm. and all that. But unfortunately, the UPA government, UPA too, did not take it seriously. Then, now the BJP government is trying to be more anti-labor to satisfy the corporates and multinational corporations. All these multinational corporations who are trying to come to India, mm -hmm. they have to abide the labor laws in their own country, mm -hmm. but they don't want labor laws in our country. Uh, on, the other hand, and on the other hand, the government would say, we started schemes like Skill India, we want to give employment to everybody. So uh, there is Make in India, there is Skill India. Uh, they are looking at, let's say, agriculture uh, becoming a growth industry kind of a thing. So they would say we are doing all this for development of the people and we are in involving everybody. They are saying that it's inclusive. I don't know how you react to that. There is a contradiction in all these type of things. The so-called make in India and uh, multinational corporations, FII is coming here and all that. There are, they want tax concession, they want free land, they don't want land reform, this uh, labor reforms, they don't want labor rights, trade union rights and all this. So when we want a development, when others want to come and take the advantage of the cheap labor that is available in our country and abundance of the land and all that, at the same time, they should respect the law of the land and there should be a proper balance we should defend the rights of our poor people, unorganized labor and agriculture labor and all these people. And do you also think uh, that the social sector, the kind of importance it should have been given in terms of, we all know that how the funding uh, was actually cut down rather than enhancing the budgetary provisions? Yes, in the social sector, that is unfortunately, it's not properly being taken into consideration and there are different angles by which it can be done. The most important thing is the balance between the needs of the poor and downtrodden section of the society and at the same time the development. At the cost of the poor, at the cost of the farmer, at the cost of the labor, the country cannot advance. Maybe we will have more bigger GDP. So they are saying technology is the answer. So you have a digital India 
uh, program, uh, you know, also there. Uh, there is a there is an emphasis on social media, more connectivity, uh, encouraging the youth, and all these kind of programs are there. So, uh, I don't know where you see the gap. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little pessimistic about it. When there is no job to do, when there is no food to eat, when there is no drinking water, what is the fun of having this digital connection and all that? The thing is that basic needs of the poorest of the poor, mm -hmm. that should have more priority. Okay. I am not against the digital India yeah, and all that. We are all for it, yeah. But we should not cheat the nation and deceive the people that digital India is going to solve all the problems and all that. Okay. Any other thing that, uh, you know, you as a party and you as a front that you've been talking about that, you know, this front idea, in fact, came up and went about, but how are you looking at now, again, capturing the space of connecting with people? Yes, for connecting the people, our party recently in our party congress, we discussed. Uh, first of all, I would like to say one thing that the present parliament, out of the 543 MPs, mm. according to the government statistics and declaration, mm. more than 380 or 390 are crorepatis. Mm. The problem is more and more rich people are coming into the parliament. Mm. And getting elected, and they would say people have elected us. That is elected, but because of the faulty system of the uh, our electoral system. Number two, we want to reconnect with the people by going down. We have about 35,000 party units throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And now on the question of the land acquisition, throughout the country, mm -hmm. we could uh, organize agitations against the corruption of the present government. Okay. We had in more than 1,000 centers all over the country. So I can I can uh, tell you at this juncture that now that we have to wrap up this program and discussion, though we wanted to really ask much more and also to hear much more from you, but we'll have to wrap it up all year. It's just that I think from the people's side, I can say that uh, uh, from a party like you, there are a lot of hopes and, uh, you know, there are a lot of expectations. And I think that's what keeps should keep you going. But uh, we'll have to end it up right now, right thank here. You. And thank Sometime you so much. We'll try to live up to the expectations of the people. Yeah. and uh, try to reorganize the people and all. At the same time, I would like to say that we are not against the development, but the development should reflect in increasing, improving the life, living standards of the people yeah. downtrodden section of the society. Thank you so much uh, for being yeah. here on Rajya Sabha TV. We appreciate the time that you've given to us and thank you so much and all the best to you. And that was Mr. Sudhakar Reddy talking to us on the quest on Rajya Sabha TV. Hope you liked this conversation and this edition of the quest. Keep watching. Namaskar and bye-bye.